Today we're going to talk about exercise and whether it makes you hungry. Because if it does, that may actually negate a lot of the weight loss benefits that you expect. And it's coming right up. When people talk about the energy balance equation, that is body fat equals calories in minus calories out. This is always true, but it doesn't necessarily mean what people think it means. That is, if you increase your exercise, people say, well, the calories out is going to go up and therefore you may lose body fat, which is possible. But there's another possibility that is when you increase calories out, you might increase calories in. That is, as you exercise, if it makes you more hungry and you eat more, well, then body fat might simply stay constant and therefore you're not going to see any significant weight loss. So first of all, you have to understand that exercise is good for you. We should all be doing more exercise or becoming more physically active. There's a lot of benefits, but when we're talking about weight loss, it's not a great benefit. It's very difficult to lose weight doing exercise and it's sort of like brushing your teeth. Good for you, definitely, but is it going to make you lose weight? Nah, not really. So yes, it does have an effect in weight loss, but it's not a very strong one. So why is that? Well, let's look at the effect on hunger. We can see that acute exercise is actually going to reduce hunger. That is during the actual exercise or immediately afterwards, you're not going to feel that hungry. I mean, if you're busy running or playing basketball or playing tennis and you're really getting into the game, have you ever thought to yourself, wow, I'm really hungry right now? Probably not. And it's because your body has increased its uh, sympathetic nervous system, which is going to shunt the blood into the muscles. You're uh, focusing on getting the ball or playing or whatever, and you're simply not hungry hungry because you're not thinking about it and you're not trying to digest food. And this is called exercise induced anorexia. And it's been known for many, many years, 20 to 30 years, at least we know that vigorous exercise suppresses appetite and it's mediated by certain hormones. Ghrelin is the so-called hunger hormone because when it goes up, you tend to be more hungry. And there's other ones such as GLP one, and also peptide YY. And these are gut hormones that signal to us to not be so hungry. This study titled acute exercise and appetite regulating hormones in overweight and obese individuals was a meta analysis of six studies. That is, they looked at six studies then tried to put all the results together to see what happened during exercise. And what they found, of course, was that ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone, decreases during exercise, which is what we've all experienced, what we know that is during the actual exercise and for a little bit afterwards during that recovery period, we're just not hungry. It's not a psychological effect. It's a real effect because our body is telling us don't be hungry as we recover. But weight loss is more than just about what happens during the exercise, what happens over the entire day. And to do that, you have to look at this more recent study from 2021. This was titled effect of exercise training interventions on energy intake and appetite control in adults with overweight or obesity, a systemic review and meta-analysis. That's a lot, but what it really means is that they were uh, just looking at all the studies that they could find on this question of people who are overweight and trying to lose weight, what happens to their overall caloric intake as you try to get them to exercise more. And there's been a lot of studies done and you can see that they looked at a number of these, but you'll see that the majority of these studies are very, very poor quality studies. And when you're looking at a meta-analysis, you don't want poor quality studies because if you put garbage data in, you're going to get garbage data out. 
So if we look more specifically at those studies that they considered either fair or good quality studies, then you see that indeed there is an increase in overall hunger and appetite over the entire day. And of course, if you're more hungry, that's going to lead you to eat more. And that of course is going to reflect itself in lower weight loss than you would expect. And this is the phenomenon known as compensation. That is your body compensates to that uh, energy expenditure or that exercise by making you more hungry. Of course, this compensation is just a form of homeostasis. That is your body tends to try and want to stay in the same place. So if you stress it one way, it's going to try and pull you the other way. So if you're trying to expend energy through exercise, it's going to try and make up for that by making you more hungry. And this explains the real world observations. And you can see this 2008 study from Harvard called Total Energy Intake, Adolescent Discretionary Behaviors and the Energy Gap. And what they did here was that they looked at kids who were doing various exercises that they normally all do and looking at what the calorie gap was. Was it positive? Was it negative? How positive? How negative? So for example, when kids are watching TV, you see that there's a positive 102 calories per hour. So that sort of makes sense. If you're just sitting there watching TV and eating something, for example, a snack, then you're going to be on average positive 102 calories for every hour that you do that. Well, what about light exercise? This was 3.5 METs, which is metabolic equivalence, which is a measure of how much exercise they're doing. And shockingly, they were positive 99 calories per hour, which is almost as bad as watching TV and only a little bit better than playing video games, which was positive 73 calories per hour. When you get to doing something like homework, for example, it's pretty neutral. You're neither gaining weight nor are you losing weight. When you're doing homework, for example, you're not typically eating because you have to be writing or using your calculator or something. And you're also not expending a lot of energy. So it tends to be neutral. And again, shockingly, it's about the same as moderate exercise, which is 4.8 metabolic equivalents, which is only negative one calorie per hour. You have to get to fairly intensive exercise to actually create a calorie deficit. So this whole idea of using exercise as a weight loss mechanism is limited and practically every study done in the last 20 years has shown this exact same thing. And it doesn't um, break the rules of thermodynamics. It doesn't break the sort of energy balance equation. What it shows is that we have to understand at a deeper level how to lose weight and what is causing that weight loss is not necessarily just as simple as increasing your exercise because while it has so many other benefits, it doesn't necessarily cause the weight loss that we're looking for. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you learned something about this. If you did, maybe subscribe. Maybe share it with a friend. They may learn something too. And if you want to learn more about how to lose weight, check out some of my other videos, such as this playlist on how to lose weight. See you next week, everybody.